Have you ever wondered where amigurumi originally came from or how long ago it was invented? Me too! Hi there, I'm Elise and I am a self-proclaimed amigurumi addict and when I get interested in a subject, I want to know everything there is to know about it and that is no different than learning about the history of amigurumi. I want to know its roots, I want to know where it came from and today that is what we are going to talk about and I think you're really going to like this episode because it is fascinating. Fascinating. One little warning before we get started is that as much as I have enjoyed gathering all of this information about the history of amigurumi, I am not a professional or an amateur historian. And what I've done is gathered a lot of different resources and tried to consolidate it into a logical timeline. But I want you to take this information as anecdotal. Don't quote me on it because some of these facts could be wrong. Amigurumi doesn't have a specific start date. It avoids evolved over time and there's some debate about when and where it actually started. Most of the articles that I found agreed that it likely began in ancient China during the Shang Dynasty. Then in the 17th century, Dutch traders made their way to Japan and they brought the art of knitting with them because the Japanese did not have knitting or crochet at the time. And the samurai are the ones who actually picked up knitting, which is what I think is so incredibly interesting. They were knitting things like socks with toes on them so that they could be more agile with all of their battle moves and all of the things that samurai do. And they were also knitting adornments for their armor, which I think is so incredible. At some point, our beloved craft got its official name, Ami Gurumi. It's a combination of two Japanese words, Ami meaning knitted and Nui Gurumi meaning stuffed creature. I imagine that people around the world have been knitting and crocheting toys long before it ever got an official name. As soon as people were able to crochet and knit, they liked began making small toys for their children. And if you're interested in checking out some old crocheted or knitted patterns, make sure to check the link in the description box below because you'll find the antique pattern library there. And that is a really interesting website if you would like to look at all of these old printed patterns. They're really amazing and you'll find some toy ones in there too. And let me just say, after looking at those patterns, I am so thankful for our modern patterns with the nice big type and all of our explanations because a lot of those old patterns don't have a lot of information in them because they assumed that you already knew what you were doing. So I'm really thankful for our modern books and patterns and all the resources that we have. But what we call amigurumi really didn't get its start until around the 1960s in Japan. And during that time, Japan was changing rapidly after World War II. And a lot of their society was changing from a more agrarian type structure to a more urban type living and people were craving cuteness. They were craving things that were just a little less serious. The kawaii movement began in the 1970s in Japan and it really is the modern beginning of amigurumi. It's where we start to see the very beginnings of it and kawaii's leading lady is Hello Kitty. You see her big head and the cute little pink bow on her little ear and that really is the beginning of all things cute and this is what the modern Met said of the kawaii movement. Roughly translated as cuteness, kawaii is one of the most frequently used Japanese words. In a broader sense, it describes the culture of celebrating all things adorable and embracing fictional characters as the embodiment of positivity. Originating as a distinctly Japanese cultural trend, the concept soon evolved into the worldwide phenomenon it is today, spreading through many aspects of modern life, including art, fashion, technology, and even food. This this trend of everything little and cute eventually spread across the world and it got into the hands of crocheters and knitters who likely thought, I can make that. With the invention of the internet in the early 2000s, it began to spread like wildfire because people were able to share patterns, they were able to share photos. Social media took it a step further by making it incredibly simple for us to connect with people with similar interests all around the world. And as people started to share photos of their amigurumi toys, other people saw them and thought, I want to learn how to make that too. My own history with amigurumi began with 
this little tiny rabbit right here. It was December of 2017 and I had been crocheting for about a year, but I'd been primarily focused on crocheting blankets. And one day I happened to stumble across the Wooly Wonders Crochet YouTube channel and I saw this tutorial for a little crocheted rabbit and I thought, oh my gosh, I totally want to make that. But then the thought occurred to me, well, no, you can't do that. That's too hard. And then the other part of me said, why not? Why can't I just try and just see. I turned on the tutorial and I stayed up late into the night making this little bunny rabbit. Now he's got a lot of issues and he's got holes and he's got problems but you know what I thought he was about the cutest thing that I had ever seen and I really was hooked from that time forward. And fortunately for me at that time was when Jan Schenkel published the Animal Friends of Pika Pau book and when I saw that little frog on the cover of that book there wasn't anything else I really wanted to do. I had to make that frog. And here he is. I just still think that this is one of the cutest patterns that I have ever seen. I love anything Animal Friends of Pika Pau and her patterns just keep getting better and better. And just to let you know, she's got a brand new Animal Friends of Pika Pau 3 coming out in November. And I'll leave a link for you in the description box below if you want to pre-order it. Because I have a feeling if you love Amigurumi, you're going to want to get your hands on that new book. From that point forward, my love for Amigurumi continued to grow and I just wanted to do it more and more and more. And these days you'll find me designing my very own toys. I have the Three Little Pigs pattern and the Not So Big Bad Wolf and I'm getting ready to publish A Kitten and Her Mittens. I love everything about toy making. I think it is just one of the most wonderful pastimes. And as I was doing this research about Amigurumi, I found that it was really interesting that the kawaii movement, which really is the modern spark for for Amigurumi really came out of a stressful time in Japan's history and Amigurumi came about in a very stressful time in my own life personally. My son was not doing well with his health in 2016 and I needed something to help me relieve the stress. You may have heard this story before if you've ever been here but I was scrolling through Pinterest. I had decided I need a hobby because I was making myself and everyone around me absolutely bonkers because I was so stressed about the doctor's appointments, the hospital visits. My son wasn't well and I was falling apart. And when I found this beautiful crocheted blanket from Posey Gets Cozy, I knew this is what I needed to do. And I started crocheting from that point forward. But it wasn't until I found Amigurumi that I found a joy. And that's exactly what I feel like Amigurumi gives all of us is a special childlike joy that crocheting anything else just doesn't give me. And although I do love to crochet and knit other things, nothing brings me joy like crocheting a little creature, a little critter, and seeing its little personality come to life. There's nothing that makes me happier. So if you're already an Amigurumi maker, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're just here out of curiosity, let me just tell you that Amigurumi really is as wonderful as you may think it is. We live in such an amazing time where patterns and tutorials are are at our fingertips. You can get online, you can get on YouTube and find ways to learn how to make amigurumi or just learn how to make a different toy or learn a new technique. Libraries are beginning to stock amigurumi books, which I think is so incredibly wonderful. Many of us have craft stores right in our own areas or we're able to shop online for yarns at great prices. So now is such a wonderful time to live because we have all of these wonderful resources at at our fingertips for Amigurumi. I hope you enjoyed today's video all about the history of Amigurumi and hearing a little bit about why I started to crochet Amigurumi. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I would love to know more about your history of Amigurumi. How did you get started? What really keeps you going? What is your motivation for crocheting and knitting toys? I would love to hear from you. But as always, stay safe out there and happy stitching. 